by his grace today, we will be enlightening ourselves about marriage. So we'll be speaking about Christian marriage. You know, the word Christian marriage sounds familiar to everybody. I believe every one of us think we have Christian marriage. But Christian marriage is meant for people that follow Christ. It's meant for people that follow the world. So if I say Christian marriage, I may not be talking to everybody. I may be talking to only a few people. But I want to talk to everybody. Praise the Lord. But I might not be talking to everybody. Because some of us, we've left the way for another way. We've not been acting in our whole various home as a Christian. Praise the Lord. And by his grace today, we'll be using the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29 to 33. Ephesians 5, 29 to 33. And Bible says, For no man ever yet ate his own flesh, but nourished and shared it, even as the Lord, the church. Verse 30, For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For his cause, for this cause, shall a man leave his father's and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And the two, they two shall be one flesh. 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Uh, if I go back to yeah, 32. He said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Praise the Lord. That's why I say, I might not be speaking to everybody, but I want to speak to everybody. So he's saying, this thing is talking about Christ and the church. In other words, he's talking about Christians, how it's supposed to be, how marriage is supposed to be, how home is supposed to be run. How many people know that marriage came from God? How many people know that, that marriage came from God? We do not start marriage. God started marriage. And if he started marriage, he knows how best he should run. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he has given us a way how that marriage should run. And if your marriage is running, <clears throat> excuse me, contrary to what God has said, you are heading to either divorce or heading to evil sickness. How many people know that a bad marriage can make people sick? It can derail your more completely. It can lead you to your to your grave early when you enter a bad marriage. It's better to remain unmarried than to enter into a bad marriage. I have seen people they will say, uh, "I'm looking for the right person." Oh, it's not the right man. It's not the right woman. What if if you as a woman or you as a man, you got the right person? For example, your wife is the right person, or your husband was the right, is the right person, but you are not the right person for the person. So you make the the, the right person to be living in hell. Praise the Lord. So in other words, there are principles that we need to follow, and I would say, as a person outside Christ, we can't follow it. That's why I said in the first place, it is meant for Christians. How many Christians are here? Praise the Lord. So everybody will follow it. I see all hands help. So it's talking about people that know Christ. People that are Christian. That follow Christ. They look like Christ. They are like Christ. They, if you know the, where they got the name Christian, it was after Jesus left, they began to say, oh, these are the followers of Christ. They are Christ-like. That's why they got the name Christian. So these people are followers of Jesus. And this word, you see, I'm talking to people that are my followers. People that know what Christ is. This is what the Bible, that's why you say it's a mystery. When you tell somebody that two will become one, it's a mystery. 
how can two become one? And what the Bible is saying, I am talking to the Christians. I want to speak to a home that's, that are Christians. I want to talk to a marriage that's built on Christendom. Hallelujah. And that's what we want to talk about today. Praise the Lord. And I want to open your eyes before I start going to where I want to go. I want to open your eyes to few things that you must see in your marriage or you might be going through right now in your marriage. And if it's not uh, timely handled, it might cause a divorce, it might lead to sickness, it might cause a kind of uh, mishap in the marriage, it can even lead to uh, abuse of uh, marriage or whatever. So these are the things we talk about before we go a little bit to another direction. Things you will already see in your marriage or you might see in your marriage and it depends on how you handle them. If you handle them differently, you get a result that was promised. Like what we did in Bible Sunday School today. We said, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Hallelujah. So, when you do them, you will get a blessing. Hallelujah. So, the first thing I'm going to open your eyes to see, symptoms that you see in your marriage, that you need to tackle on time, is criticism. Tell your neighbor, criticism. 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 That's the first symptoms that you know your marriage is already sick. If I say criticism, I mean a constant criticizing of one another. You can't both agree on one point. You can't both agree on the situation. Even when you know maybe your, your wife or your husband is right, you still want to make a point that you want to be right. Tell somebody you cannot always be right every time. So the first symptoms you see is when you criticize each other every time. If care is not taken, that marriage will lead to divorce. That marriage may lead to abuse. That marriage may add to a destruction. Those are the things, first thing you have to notice, criticism. They criticize each other for little things. Even on how to take care of children, they criticize each other. On every small thing, it's about criticism. They are looking for how to criticize one another. But I want you to believe that if every marriage is run the way relationships are run, do you think anybody will have a problem in marriage? You know how relationships are run? How many people know how relationships are run? Everybody is always right in a relationship. When in a relationship, we always, even if you see a guy that is always sleeping in the morning, or maybe 12 o'clock in the morning, when in a relationship, most of us, we don't have issue with it. You see, I love that guy. He's like sleeping. You know? he's sleeping is listening, but because he's, he's already off. <laughs> he's already in love, I, I should say. He loves sleeping. But when you now get married, it's another thing. You begin, she, will, or she will begin to criticize that you sleep a lot. Why are you sleeping this way? In other words, we use a different... Uh, how, will I, how will I put it? Uh, to mayor, and we have. I'm going to speak about two glass that we need to use. We use a magnifier and a mirror. So first, a magnifier. A magnifier is when you now get married. For example, how many people know that when you are in a relationship, there is something you like in your wife or your husband that you love so much that make you to marry the person. There's always something you like. There's something you love to that she's doing or he's doing that makes you to get in love. Praise the Lord. But when we now enter into marriage, little issues comes up. Instead of us to sit down and uh, iron it out one on one, speak to truth, speak the truth to each other, but we begin to push the ball to each other. Instead of we play the ball around, for example, we push it in a ball in our corner. That you are wrong. You are supposed to do that. You are supposed to know that. You it is your fault. You have to do this. You have to do. This. So we criticize one another instead of sitting down. To settle the issue and make it more nicely in a way that we can have peace in our home. You know, sometimes, uh, maybe I, I, from, from where I come from, for example, my grand grand will never pay attention to a birthday, for example. 
And if I get married to someone that pay more attention to bed day, and uh, each time maybe the, she's expecting me to wake up in the morning, take her how to go and eat for bed day, or begin to do remember remember her three days before bed day. If I marry somebody and I'm not doing that, if you don't sit down and talk about it from where you are coming from, she will keep on criticizing you. Even next year, that was how you did it last year. You didn't even remember my dates. Last two years, you didn't do. So you keep on rolling the ball, rolling the ball. Instead of you to sit down, understand where you are coming from, understand the background you are coming from, and base your argument on Christ. Praise the Lord. We don't. We are not meant to criticize one another, but we are meant to make ourselves better. There are some negative uh, arguments that works better for us as well. That, like for example, you know somebody that. It's so lazy, doesn't want to work. You marry to a man or a woman that she doesn't want to work, she's so lazy. You can, yeah, try to push her out to do something, encourage her, energize her, but not too much assured, praise the Lord. So tell your neighbor, don't criticize one another. And number two is defensiveness. Defensiveness. It is not my fault, it is your fault. We fail to take responsi uh, responsibility for our mistakes. Uh, I think go that goes more to men. Men fail sometimes to take responsibility uh, for their mistake. They like to push uh, the mistake to their uh, spouse because they believe that they are the head. They believe that nobody is struggling that with them. They believe that they are in charge. They believe they are uh, always right. So, and they begin to push blame instead of accepting and sitting down and sort things out. So they push it to their wife. It is your fault. Begin to defend, defend yourself instead of going to the rule roots and uh, taking blame. And number two, uh, number three, I, I want to go faster because of time so that we can talk. Number three, disrespect and contempt. So you begin to see those signs in your marriage that you were feeling so disrespected by your wife or by your husband. It can go both ways. Husband can disrespect wife. Wife can also uh, disrespect her husband. So if you are disrespected and feeling content in your marriage, those are the signs we need to stand up against and uh, begin to ask God for divine knowledge, how to walk through it. Pray to God and not only prayer. Prayer doesn't uh, do everything. After you pray, you have to take a diligent step on how to, uh, to, to, to sort that out. You know, sometimes maybe your wife is talking or your husband is talking. You, f you just neglect him or her. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants to be neglected. And it, 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 it happens often in the marriage, especially when they have tussles. And uh, you, the, the, the right person, maybe the husband or the wife, make him try to talk to the wife. And the wife uh, don't want to talk. Or sometimes they talk in the content like, Talking as if you are nothing, for example, yeah, yeah, yeah. You may say, you know, kind of what to just put the man uh, a bit down or put the wife a bit down. It's as if you don't mind what they are saying. Some people are even talking to them, they are looking elsewhere. They don't mind you. And uh, it's not good. So, those are the number three signs that if you see in your marriage, uh, you need to wake up on time, talk about it on time. Otherwise, you can't keep it going like that. If you keep it going, it will end to divorce. Or it will end to kind of a labor sickness. It may make you sick mentally. It may make you sick in your mind. It may make you sick in your marriage. It may make you sick in your body. It can cause a lot of harm. It will lead to abuse that one of you will be beating each other. Maybe before you know it. You know, husbands sometimes they kill one another. All started from something like that. So we need to notice those signs on time and walk against them on time and see how we can change our behaviors. Because believe you me, it's what you put into your marriage that you get. If you fail to put any effort into your marriage, believe you me, there's no miracle marriage that will happen. I can say God will promise you a miracle marriage. It doesn't happen. You need to put effort into the marriage. Like I said, you pray, but take action about what needs to be changed. You can change your mind on what you want to magnify, like I said. You can magnify the mistake of your wife. You can magnify the mistake of your husband. And you know what you get back? You get lack of peace. You get a rousy home. You get divorce. You get sickness. But when you choose to magnify that thing that you saw in her when you marry her, 
when you choose to magnify it a diligent, when you choose to magnify the good part of her, believe you me, there's something that's always good in your spouse. Not everything is bad. As a matter of fact, if you say, oh, my husband is so bad, my wife is so bad, there's always something that is good about them. So if you choose to use a magnifier as a glass, picture on those things that is good about them. Magnify it, make it big. Whatever you make big, give you up, make it big. The way she do things, magnify on that. So in other words, you will fail to see her error on time. But if you choose to magnify on her mistake, you wake up each day thinking she's going to make a mistake. The wife is waiting for when the, the husband will wake up and forget to help her in the dish. She said, we're expecting, oh, she, she already, she, I know she will forget to take the, the trash out today. I know she'll forget to take the kid. I know she'll forget to bath the kid today. That's not the way to deal with it. Praise the Lord. You don't magnify on the error. You magnify on when he did it. For example, a man, every man likes to, to help the wife at home. But no man wants to be tell exactly what to do. Praise the Lord. Each time. Praise the Lord. For example, if I'm helping my wife to take uh, to go and make shopping, for example, buy things and come home with it. If I come with two bags one day and say, oh, honey, how did you manage to come with two bags? How is it possible you can carry this two heavy bag? Like, I'm like, Phew. yeah, I can carry it anyway. Next time if I'm going out, I'm going to even carry four, put one on my neck. I will even use teeth to hold one. Because, it do, but if I come with two bags, say, ah, you should have buy more. We say, ah, but these two are too heavy, but you can carry them. You can, you've already killed the morale of that guy. Next time, if you go out, even if you call him to make shopping, you'll be surprised we'll come up with nothing. He will tell you, you have to go today. But it depends on how you uh, magnify on the little things they do. Maybe they, we are not good at cleaning. Leave you or you take it. No man is good at cleaning. You can't expect a man to... Only few men are like women. They take pensions. But I, I think 80% of men, they, they, love, they don't know how to arrange things very good. For example, so for if they try to manage to help you one time, you come inside, I appreciate what they do. I say, oh, you, you, you clean it. Oh, the house is so clean. Even your mind, even if it's not clean. Next time, he's going to do it more. If you strop it for one hour, next time, you're going to do it like two hours. So that you can get another kudos. Hallelujah. Everybody wants to help. It goes the same way to a wife as well. If your wife does something to you, uh, appreciate it. As little as it is. Whatever thing you do, just try to appreciate it. Tell them of which most of us are lacking. We always see that they didn't do it enough. You should have done it this way. Instead of saying, oh, we appreciate you for what you do, and try to magnify on the little thing they do. Let them know that, oh, you, you bath for the children today, you take them to school. So amazing. Oh, maybe only a walk. We didn't even walk with the children outside. It goes a long way. Maybe the father takes the child out and he comes back, oh, you took the child out today. So amazing, I saw you guys walking in the bush and I love it. Just simple, simple things. It tricks and it gives you peace in your home. But when you choose to put your glass and begin to look for the mystic in your wife or the mystic in your husband, trying to look for how to criticize, how to... In your own mind, you are thinking you want to make her best. That's what most of us do, and that's the mistake we make. We always think the more we criticize them, or the more we speak against their action, that's the more they will change. That's a lie. Tell your neighbor, you can't change nobody. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot force people to change. To change people is to change yourself. If you want to change your wife or want to change your husband, you have to change yourself. If a man refuses to change himself, you cannot change your wife. If you refuses to change yourself as a wife, you can't change your husband. For example, your husband is coming home and you act very harsh, or your wife is coming home, you always want to be the boss to buzz her down. And you are telling her now to, it cannot change. Because she will now be looking at the negative part of your life. But when you change yourself, you change the way you behave. You can calm your wife or your husband down. Nobody come, uh, like the Bible says, it's only the mad person that will just wake up each day and begin to beat yourself. You can only wake up and, because the Bible says two become one. And what is devil trying to do? Devil is trying to make one become two. 
We also he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So God said two will become one, but the devil is saying two have to, one have to become two. That's the ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, motive of the devil. It's coming to fight marriage. And what is marriage? Marriage is church. When devil succeeded in fighting homes, he succeeded in destroying the church. And that's why Christians have to stand up for whatever they hear. Pick up yourself. Follow the word. Everybody want peace, I believe. Everybody want joy. Nobody want each day problem, problem, problem in their life. But what can give us peace and joy is by listening and following the word of God and make them to come to pass. Practice them at home. Practice them in our life. Praise the Lord. And you will see the peace that you belong in from coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four is stonewalling. Fail to talk to each other. Little issue, they fail to talk. The wife is taking something and the husband is taking something. They keep their self away. They just bring this kind of a war between themselves. If they want to look at each other, they will look as like this and turn their eyes. They will be just... In their mind, they are thinking of something. Intentionally, most of them think, let me just keep quiet so that I can... Uh, uh, calm the situation so that I don't make it worse and when it gets longer it becomes an issue and that's when the devil now creeps in the devil now begins to talk to you as a man or as a wife it begins to change your motive let you see what you've not been seen before it lets you see that <clears throat> that your husband has been doing wrong. it will be ministering to your mind <clears throat> because the devil works with the mind hallelujah he ministers to you, he talks to you in the place of your loneliness. In the place of where you are isolating yourself from your man. The Bible says, it's so that man should not be alone. That was why he created a wife for the man. Praise the Lord. And if a man is alone, even in his own marriage, if a woman is alone in his own marriage, that's devil at work. Praise the Lord. Because that's the, not the intention. The intention is for you two to become one. And when two is one, it means when one is doing something, the other one has to know. Two cannot become one when you are doing things separately. Two cannot become one when the wife is building a house and the husband doesn't know. Two cannot become one when the husband is building when the wife doesn't know. Two cannot become one when I don't know. I don't know how you spend your money. It cannot. <coughs> if I don't know how my wife spends the money and she doesn't know how I spend my money, there's always a problem. In her mind, she will, be, she will be calculating even the money I don't earn. Even some of us, our wife or our husband don't know our salary. They don't know our income. Like I said, change starts from you. You can say, oh, my husband keeping it away from me. Oh, my wife has not been showing to me. Why should I start? It means you are not still ready for peace. It means you are not ready for joy. Praise the Lord. If you are ready for peace, if you are ready for joy in your marriage, if you want peace to reign according to what God has given, you have to let go. In the first place, the Bible says in the book of Matthew 6, 33, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of what? So everything will be added. So if you make Jesus your foundation of your marriage, if you make Jesus the foundation of your home, things will work beyond your expectation. Everybody wants peace. Nobody wants to wake up each day and fight, fight, fight. But as long as you fail to do what the Bible says about your marriage, as long as you fail to apply the principle of marriage, you will continue to have issue, problem, rives, unresolved issue. It's not possible that you have a perfect marriage without a rife, a strife. But how do you get out of the strife? That's what's more important. Matthew 5 and 22 to 26 was talking about a person that started with, maybe we can just read it together. Matthew 5, 22. But I say unto you, that whatsoever is angry with his brother, without a cause, shall be a danger of judgment. And whosoever shall say to his, to his brother, Raka, I don't know the word Raka, maybe it's a foul word, I think, I believe. <laughs> Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, we know that, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and they are 
and their remembrance that thy brother had not against thee. Verse 24. Leave there thy gifts before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gifts. Please. Agree with, that, with thy adversary quickly. Why thou art why thou art in the way with him? Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge and the judge deliver thee to the officer and thou be cast into prison. Verse 26. Verily I say unto thee, thou shalt, thou shalt by no means come out thanks till thou hast paid the Ottoman's fault. What is the Bible talking about here? It says, if you abuse somebody, I'm just going to use this uh, Bible passage and bring it back to our marriages. The Bible is saying, somebody say raka to somebody. Raka is a foul word, for example. Somebody call somebody a fool. And you see the judgment, hellfire, hell, and uh, imprisoning. So what is the Bible trying to say? The Bible is trying to tell us that marriages, issues in our marriage within our brothers, start with simple word. It start, start with simple misunderstanding. It starts with simple issue. And the Bible says it magnifies it and sends people to hell. Uh, many people are living in hell, even in their marriage. Many people are in hell already in their marriage, not waiting to get to hell for you. Many people are in prison, even in their own marriage. They have been in prison in their own home. He said he started with little mistake, with little issue. And when they failed to resolve the little issue, the man that came to destroy, that came to kill, that came to steal, will steps in. He said, little issue, they call yourself, those little issue, and you see the way, he, the punishment, and they bring a war between themselves. For example, a, a woman went out. I think every man will be making like, what is happening here? That's why women are built differently, praise the Lord. They went out, for example, and they came in with a lot of bags. They bought bags, shoes, whatever. You came in, and your heart, you are happy. But once you step into your house, your husband's house is like, because he saw those bags as a grenade. He saw it as a weapon against their finance. He saw it as a to the finance. But the woman saw it as a, don't you like it? The man will now went to go and look at that car that, oh. But to the woman, he saw it as, as a, oh, it's nice, it's nice. Hallelujah. And from there, if you try to make things in a different way, you may build a wall. Praise the Lord. So little issue, if we fail to resolve it, for example, Oh, last year, he failed to call my father. Throughout last year, my wife did not call my parent. In your heart, you are angry. In your heart, you are angry. Saying, oh, oh. And you went, instead of solving it to yourself, you bring, a, for example, a pillar. You move, move a peg. For example, I have a peg in my hand. I put a peg here. Oh, last year, he failed to call my father. I drive it in. In my heart, I'm hungry. Looking at my wife, that's she failed to call my father. Next time, maybe my wife says, Oh, my husband failed to call me on the day of birthday. Instead of sitting down and solve it, she went to pick a peck. He drive it in. Before he knows, they begin to build peck, peck, peck. And what happened? They put themselves in prison in their own house. Oh, he failed to bring my father, I put a peck here. Oh, he failed to call my parents, another peck. He fails to, to answer my call, another pair. Oh, I suspect her. I don't. So before you know, you bring, you see like a wall. And the time the wife is there and the husband is here, in their own house, they are speaking from a small window. How are you feeling there? How? They create the wall yourself By failing to drop those issues, by failing to sit down and solve the issue themselves, by failing to sit down and look at the issue that this issue is not supposed to bring an, a misunderstanding in our home. We, should, we don't have to make issue out of it. Once you see the issue, try to see it, drop it. Don't put a peg. Don't put a mark. Oh, last year I failed this. Last year I failed it. Before you know, you have counts of walls, of issues that you have marked. Every time you are pointed to it, you are pointed to it, and it became a wall. That was what the Bible says. You see, you have now put yourself in prison. 
from your own act. I'm using that Bible for your marriage. Praise the Lord. And most of us has built that wall in our own home. Gradually, gradually, unknowingly, ignorantly, we build a wall. And we are in prison in our own marriage. We are in a prison in our own home. The husband don't know what the woman is doing anymore. The woman doesn't know what the man is doing anymore. Because they are risk a wall now, built by their ignorance, built by their anger, built by their unforgiving spirit. So they create this wall and they begin to enslave in their own home, pains in their own home, issues that goes long way without solution, brings a war and it causes people to be in prison. May we not be in prison in the name of Jesus Christ. As from now, drop the magnifier. Use it in the perfect way. Magnify the positive things in the life of your spouse. Drop the things that are not negative that are negative about them. You can make comments for them, but not drive on it. Just magnify it. When they were good, look at when they helped you before. It comes among women. They will look at men. There's nothing you have done for me since we married. Always, not, they always that, that's the language. What have you done? Nothing. It's always nothing. Just look at, if you can flash your mind back, you will have seen where he has stand for you, at least for once. He also go the same way for man. Sometimes we say the woman is not helpful. Not, some, some people would tell them you cannot cook. What, what she made it, appreciate what she made. She go a long way to make that for you. It's not for you to say, hey, you cannot cook, my mother can cook than you. Go and marry your mother. <laughs> yeah. So if they cannot cook, it's effort put in that. Tell them, oh, so sweet, even she know. It is not, say, oh, this food is so nice, so nice food. She will you, but I don't even feel it's nice. Yeah, yeah, but it's so good, it's nice. Next time she will go and Google and whatever to make it more better. But if you come here and say, my mother cooks better than you, then it will leave the kitchen for you. <laughs> then you take the kitchen yourself, do it. Then she will sit down and eat it. And once you start eating like that, later you say, you are so lazy, you don't want to help me in the kitchen. Yeah. You see, your mother is good. Praise the Lord. It's also for men. If I help you in cleaning, and when I finish cleaning, you are clean behind me. It's better I leave it for you. Come and do it once. Yeah. Sometimes you clean, you help the woman to clean at home. And when they come inside, they are cleaning behind you. <laughs> so it's better I don't do double work. <laughs> then they, they clean it. But if I clean, so it's nice. You, it's like you clean here today. See, yeah, they, yeah, it's nice. It's nice. nice. So, but you can make some little talk, but appreciate. But not when you clean. Say, you clean it? You say, are you sure you clean here? Paul, are you sure, really? <laughs> the next time, the man will leave it and cross leg. And when you come in, of course, you, say, you don't want me. You cannot even have to arrange here. Ah, once I arrange it, you will arrange it again. Praise the Lord. So little things goes a long way. And before you know, you have walls. Because, the woman, because I believe every woman feel loved when they were helped at home. Most women feel they are loved when their husband helped them. Even coming to, uh, even washing dishes, taking care of dishes, arranging his home, many women, f- but men don't like to do that, of course. Most men, especially African men, they don't love to do that. But these days we have uh, washing machines that uh, <laughs> throw the money, but that makes it easy. But if you help them, in, I'm just trying to say, if you help them in little things, women appreciate it a lot. You know they can do it, but you just spare your time to do it for them. And uh, yeah, so when you do it, and the women should learn how to appreciate it another way. Not that when you they watch the dishes, you come to the kitchen. Ah, who watch the place? It's Papa. Oh, and mess up the table like this. Oh, yes. The next time we leave the dish for you. Praise the Lord. So we should learn to work with each other rather than building a fence in our mind. And whatever thing you have against your spouse, learn to speak it out and solve it within that period. If two old persons, if you are living together and you are married together, you can't resolve issue. It's a sign that your marriage is heading for a doom. If you cannot sit down together and talk without fighting, that's a problem, a big one. If you cannot sit down and agree on a point, there's always a problem. There's a problem already. If you can't sit down and talk without disrespecting each other, without calling yourself names, there's always, the hand is not perfect. Praise the Lord. Before you sit down, your husband call your names, your wife call your names, what shall that marriage will not last? If it lasts, Someone is suffering for another. Praise the Lord. That's your abuse already in that marriage. Praise the Lord. But learn to take your uh, your fault, accept, I made a mistake. 
Oh, I'm sorry. And once the other person, I'm sorry, it's not the time for you to begin to Muhammad and begin to remember. You say I'm sorry last year. You say I'm sorry last. I know you always say I'm sorry. No, take the I'm sorry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we need to work on that. And uh, I believe marriage is created for peace. It's created for the benefit of humanity. And the person that can hurt you most, this is what you have to know, is someone you love. Someone you love is the one that can hurt you most. People outside can do a lot of things to you. You won't catch them. But if your wife or your husband do it to you, you will get mad at them. Praise the Lord. But your intimacy should not be for fighting. It should be for you to come together and be able to worship God. Praise the Lord. So if you allow what the Bible is saying here, you say, wife, reference your husband. Reference your husband. Don't look at your bank account. I'm any more than my husband. Reference your husband. Don't look at your education. Don't look at your age. I am older than my husband. Or my, I'm my older my. No, reference your. And the latest uh, marriage and time, the, 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 the Queen's uh, Palace. The wife is older than the guy, right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. If the marriage will last, the woman has to take his place and reference. That's what man needs. Men does not need anything from you, woman. We only need to be honored. We just want you to honor us. If you honor us, we can clean your house for you. We can carry your garbage out. If you give us a place. And women need what? Love. That's what the Bible says. It says love your wife. Give love to your wife. When you love them, of course, they will also reference you. But don't be waiting for your husband to love you before you reference. And don't be waiting for your wife to reference before you love. Praise the Lord. Because it's your duty to do. It is your duty. It's what the Bible said you should do. If you want to live a Christian life, a Christian marriage, if you want people to see that these people are Christians, your neighbors, they listen to your door sometimes when you are fighting. They hear they hear your noise when you fight. They say, ah, they started again. And on Sunday, you're going to come to church. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are deceiving yourself. Even inside of you, you are burning. Even you are, maybe you are thinking, oh, no. Touch the heart of my husband. <laughs> and the wife will say, oh, no. And the husband says, touch my wife. You are burning inside of you. But the burning can stop if you take action. Tell your neighbor, take action. Take action. Say it can stop if you take action. Say you can still enjoy peace in your marriage if you take action. Don't let this war go without you taking an action. You can't leave a home without taking a responsibility. You can't, a perfect marriage doesn't come easy. Don't criticize. Everybody make mistakes. Don't criticize. Try to pop. Don't criticize it. Don't always criticize. No. Sit down. Talk about it. And most of us, we like not to face uh, the truth. We, we hate the truth. When the wife or the husband tells each, we tell, we tell each other the truth, we always like, no, 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 no. So instead of you taking the truth, don't defend. Just sort it out. In, instead of yeah, taking it so long. Otherwise, you started being, building that what the Bible says about prison. Hallelujah. You will not be in prison in your home in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Sit down. Sort it. Sort it. It's not too late. It's not too late. Sort it. <laughs> divorce is not a place to be. Nobody wants to be, to be divorced. Ask people that are divorced. They always tell you, I don't pray my children to be to, to divorced. Praise the Lord. And work on your marriage so that you don't end up in divorce. Because statistics have shown that home, that their parents were divorced. They are liable to divorce. Hallelujah. If you have parents that was divorced, if you don't take care of the children very good, the children is liable to end up in divorce. Because that's what they see. They see their part, part, father and mother living apart. They see that they are not home. So you need to work extra on them to let them know that I am there, but I don't like it. Praise the Lord. And nobody wants to be there. And I pray you will not be divorced in the name of Jesus Christ. But it can only happen with you changing yourself. Everything is not about money. It's not about what I can get. It's about what I can give to my home. May God help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can we just stand up on our feet? Can we go to stand up? We need to bless God for your home. Ask God to intercede for your home.
Intercede for people that are going to try, try in their marriages. Intercede for them. That God should uphold them. God should lead them. God should give grant them peace in their marriage. God should revive their home. Everyone going to try a Father Lord, intercede. Intercede. Give them peace, O oh Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name, we pray. I give one minute. Ask God for what you want him to do in your marriage. Ask God what you want him to restore in your home. And tell him that God, change me, change me. Change me. Let me live to give peace to my spouse. Lord, change me. Whatever you want God to change in your marriage, ask God to change it. Ask God to change whatever you want him to change for you. Let God himself change it for you. Thank you, Jesus. I need peace, I need joy in my home. Lord, give me peace in my marriage. Give me peace in my home. Restore my home, Lord. Restore my children. Restore everything that belongs to me. Thank you, Jesus. As from now, I will listen to you. I will do the right thing that the world says us to do. I will follow the right counsel and the word. I will not do contrary to the word. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we thank you because of our Lord. We bless you because there is no like you. Lord, I lift off every home under the sound of my voice into your hand. Father, restore their home in the name of Jesus. Everyone going to try or the other. Lord, you are God that can restore. Father, Lord God, enter into their life, enter into their marriage, and give a solution to their problem. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual attack whatsoever or concerning their marriage, concerning their home, Lord, let your hands put an end to them in the name of Jesus. Let your hand put an end to every abuse in their marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are looking for you to a marriage, Lord, provide to them the better have of them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let them find the bone of their bone in the mighty name of Jesus. Let them enter into a marriage that will give them peace. They will not enter into a home, a marriage that will give them regrets. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, I ask you, Lord God, to grant us the heart of forgiving each other as we walk along in homes in marriage, so Lord. The heart to forgive one another, Father, grant it to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because of Father us. Lord, we lift up this rest of the week to your able hand. Walk with us, O Lord. Go ahead of us. We soak ourselves and the children in the blood of Jesus. We cancel every accident, every death in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are sick, Father, Lord God, let their healing be permanent in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who are not here, let your hand rest upon them. Thank you because of answer us. For in Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord, somebody. Shout hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus.